Hello everyone, this is Rick Bond, and I am going to make a quick video for you about SPSS. And uh, maybe this will be a couple of videos, we'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm gonna go to spss.gcu.edu. I'm doing this from my home computer. I don't really know if I have Citrix server installed on this or not. So the first thing I have to do is authenticate with my username and password. Once you've typed it in the first time, I just have it remember the password. So I'll go ahead and log on here. Now the first time you do this, it's gonna take a while. You have to agree to the Citrix license agreement and click on install. Uh, if you already have this installed, you go ahead and continue and it should show up with uh, something like this. If you don't have the SPSS on your screen, the icon like this, you can use this little add button and then go to all apps and then find the SPSS and make sure that it has a check mark next to it. Once it has this check mark next to it, it show, should show up on your screen. So I have already installed the Citrix receiver on here and I'm ready to launch the software by clicking on the icon for SPSS. Now you notice in my window, it actually shows up as a download software over here. I need to click on that to actually open it up in its own window. Uh, again, the first time you run this, it's gonna take quite a while. It can also be kind of slow depending upon how many users. You're actually logging into a computer at Grand Canyon. Um, you're not downloading this software onto your computer. It's a very large and expensive piece of software. So uh, we're just logging in. Uh, I have a little filter on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and permit the use of this uh, SPSS software. While it loads up, I'll uh, talk a little bit more about SPSS. Uh, SPSS is a piece of software made by IBM, statistical package for social sciences. There's two main views that you're gonna see in here, a data view and a variable view. And in order to enter data, you have to be able to switch back and forth between the two. All right, so now I'm in SPSS. This is what it looks like, version 21. You can actually load up something that you have saved onto um, your hard drive or you can use this button right over here to type in data of your own. Um, I'm actually going to load up something that I uh, did for a cohort class that I'm uh, doing of this, this same Psych 520. Now this here is the, the window where you're actually looking at it. So you see these two tabs down here. I have data do, view and I have variable view. In the data view, I can see the names of the variables, age range, var 0002, var 0003. Those aren't the best variable names, but uh, that is what they are right now. And then down here, you have the score. So zero through four, five through nine, 10 to 14. And then these are uh, some other variables that have value. Um, this is actually one of your homework problems. This is the data that goes with one of your homework problems. And uh, we could, uh, I could try to find which exact homework problem that is. Uh, maybe it's uh, saved up here at the top. I'm not exactly sure. Chapter two, some population data that I was looking at. All right, now in the variable view, you have the name of the variable. Uh, this category here is important. This is where if you want to type in characters like the dash and the age range or um, some names for something, you have to change this to a string instead of a numeric. Um, you need to make sure that the width of your variable is large enough. If you have your width set to only um, uh, two, then you, you can't show more than two decimal places, for example. So I like to set this width up around six, seven, eight, and that way I can show out to four decimal places when I'd like to. Uh, the other category that's really important here is the measure. So if you have something that's categorical in nature, you need to make sure you set this to be nominal. And if you have things that are measuring something, you probably wanna set them to be a scale variable. Uh, you also have an option to set things to be an ordinal variable. So this is a brief introduction to, um, in the data view, you can type in data. You know, I could start a new uh, category and just start typing numbers as I go down. And then I could go over and kind of define what those variables are. Uh, I'm gonna undo these because I don't really want them. Uh, I was just making an example of how easy it is to enter data once you're in the uh, data view. The variable view is where you're gonna set the parameters of your variable. One more thing about SPSS, and then I'll stop this video and we'll make a new one, is that in SPSS, you have two different kinds of windows. 
So here's the window where you're kind of doing your work. You have the, your data view, your variable view, all that other sort of thing. And you have these other kind of windows which show up like this. And these are your output windows. They kind of are the commands that, that uh, you're telling SPSS what to do. It'll also be where your histograms show up or your tables or the output of some kind of a statistical test that you ran will show up. But when they, when they have just kind of nothing in them but these commands, you don't really need to save them for anything. So you can just X out of them and don't worry about the output windows. It'll always generate new output windows when you do stuff with your data. But if you want to save your data, make sure you go up here and use the, you know, the little uh, save button. And then uh, you want to make sure that you save it to your hard drive. Because if you just save it locally, it'll save it on the Citrix computer, which I'm pretty sure gets wiped clean every night. So your data will be lost next time you go to log in. Uh, so that's it for this video, a brief introduction to logging on to SPSS and how to manipulate between the data view and the variable view. And I'll catch you in a few minutes with another short video.